And welcome back to Jeff Kanenge live here at Citizen Television. What a great show we're having, folks. Lean Jiru had a front row seat to history unfolding for more than four decades. That's right, he was spokesman for... Oh, he worked under President Jomo Kenyatta for a year and a half, and then for more than 40 years for President Daniel Arab Moy. This man knows his history, and he knows dates like they're the tip of his, like on the tip of his fingers. I got a lot of questions for you, uh, Lee. Lots of questions uh, <clears throat> before we go to about how you planned um, uh, President Moy's funeral and all that. Uh, here's a question: If you were so close to President Moy, why has he not acknowledged during all the farewell and burial ceremonies? We expected that he would be, would have been given a chance to give a tribute. But you were totally ignored. How, why? There were rumors that the family had issues with you. Um, I do not think that the family had issues with me. Because one of the most influential people in Moist family The person who used to stay with the Muslim boy very often, who was very visible, was Senator Gideon Moy. And when I was under pressure to resign, when some evil forces were trying to destroy me and to get me out of the job, it is Gideon Moy who saved me. So there was no, no, there was no issue. It was the planners. Because you see, Gideon Moy was believed. His father had died. He was not among the people who were planning who should speak and who should not. <coughs> the people who did it are known. And I do not wish to ashamed them by announcing who they are. Mm. They know themselves. But Gideon Moy is a person I respect. Is a person who was working with me. Actually, when the father was not quite himself because of old age, he was frail. And the people wanted to take that advantage to destroy me. It is Gideon Moy in a very covert manner, who saved me. <coughs> it is not Gideon Moy. It is not Moy family. No. Because I know my enemies, and Moy family is not. OK. Linus Skykai, you know him very well? Yes, I know him. He He's says, I, I congratulate our senior, Lee Njiro, for putting his story in a book. His oral recollections, too, are breathtaking not to mention his journalistic storytelling skills. And he also goes on to say thank you for the in-depth interviews that you gave him on his, remember his Moi, Moi and Mugai documentary? Yes. Remember? Yes. He thanks you very much and looks forward to reading your book. You want to say something to him? Thank you very much, Linus. Um, after Moi's funeral, you gave a very, very, very nice tribute I thank you. Mm. I thank you for that. It is wonderful. It is difficult to get such a commentary from anybody in Kenya. It was wonderful. In fact, I'll ask you later to give me that write-up. I want to keep it, Linus. Mm. It was wonderful. It touched me. Mm. I almost cried. It was spot on. Fred Obach Machoka. I know him. You know him? Yes. <laughs> He the says, blackest man in the black house. There you go. There you go. He says, Jeff, please ask Lee to autograph one copy of that book for me. I, I must will. read it before the 9th of August. Now, we need party till number. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> All of them looking forward to reading this book. Uh, the funeral for President Moy. Yes. You all planned that way in advance, didn't you? Yes. Why? How? How? Um, by 8th January 2020, 
Mzee Moi had been in the hospital continuously for 42 days. I was counting. And I looked around. Nobody was concerned. So a former director of intelligence, Wilson Ayabe Boynet, with whom I had worked closely when he was Moy's ADC, ADD camp, from 1980s. We were almost the same age. Our thoughts were convergent in most um, issues. He came to see me. He told me, my brother, nobody looks concerned. Let us do something. We must start preparing a region for Moses' funeral. I told him I agree. He did not know that General Sumbewo and I, and another military officer whom I do not want to mention because he's still in service, we were trying to plan how we could go about it in case the worst happened. So I, I asked Boynet, so what do we do? Let's do something. I got in touch with one of the personal assistants of Cabinet Secretary Freddy Matiangi. The young man comes from my region called Mwenda Joka. Mm -hmm. I told Mwenda Joka, please, Boynet and I would like to see Cabinet Secretary Mat uh, Matiangi urgently. It is urgent. So he said, okay, I'll call you. Later he called me, told me, Matiang is ready. So after about two days, we got an appointment to meet at um, Panari Hotel. So we met at Panari Hotel, it was on a Sunday. Boyne told me, as a college, we are not allowed to discuss the death of people or their burial when they are still alive. I told him my embo culture is the same. But because I am not a college, I'll talk about the moist death. So he said, okay. So I was fearful because I could not anticipate Matiangi's reaction. But first of all, I prepared Matiangi. I told him, please, the subject I am about to talk about is taboo. He told me, okay, what is it? Go on. I told him, Musa Moi has been in the hospital for 42 days continuously. And he's on oxygen. On oxygen, and he looks bad. And again, Gideon had told us, and he told a public meeting in, in, in Kabarak, that Musa Moi, whatever age you give, you give him, and 10. So I knew Moi was over 100 years. Mm. And when you are 100 years, and you have been in a hospital for 40, 42 days, and you are on oxygen, that is not irreversible. It is one way, you are going. Matiang looked at me, he said, I agree with you, but I have to get permission from President Uhuru Kenyatta. So later I got permission from President Uhuru Kenyatta. We are rigged for a meeting in Karen, um, Hemingway's hotel, but then we realized that it was too open. Mm -hmm. So a private home, <coughs> a private house was organized where we started discussing Musa Zimbario. Well, we co-opted returned Lieutenant General Daniel Opande. Why? Because in 1978, when Mr. Njoma Kenyatta died, he was the one who was arranging and doing the program for Kenyatta Zimbario. So that is the beginning, what we did. Now people are attacking me, telling me, why did you 
started preparing him with Moe's burial. He wanted him to die. You see, Jeff, people are not realistic. People are not pragmatic. People want to bury their hands in the sand, like ostriches. Mm. What is wrong with planning somebody's death when you over 100 years? Then why do you have, what is wrong with, what is wrong with the planning? Why do you have 2030? You are planning for 2030. Presidents have bulletproof jackets. You know, people live in a time warp. It is this old constitution during Kenyatta time, which spoiled people, which cheated the people. That you are not supposed to imagine the death of a president. You are, it's reasonable even to encompass to imagine. Mm. Jesus Christ he died. Churchill died. Then who, who do you think you are? Then why do you why do you have a why do you have a minister of planning? And you think you will not die? Mm. That is why people get into problems. They start running around. Even the people, when they, their wives are pregnant, they do not want to plan. That's why they come and bother us. My wife has given me birth. It's an emergency. <laughs> it's the same yeah. thing. Okay. My phone is, <laughs> so many messages leave. My phone just died on me. But I know, what's the best moment? The happiest moment during your serving the presidents? Uh, my happiest moment is when The president, Musa Moi, showed a lot of faith in me. And I think I have talk, talked about it before. In 1981, there was the 34th United Nations General Assembly. Musa mm -hmm. Moi appointed Professor Julia Auma Ujiambo who was then as a minister in Kenyan government, to lead that delegation. Now, when they arrived in New York, Julia Ojiambo and her delegation were not allowed by the then Secretary General of the UN, the Austrian, Kuti Valutian, they were not allowed to attend, to participate. Why? Because they had forgotten letters of credits, credentials. Mm. And you know, by that time, there was no email service, so we could not email the credentials. So Moi, among everybody else in the State House, he called me. He told me, Lee, I want to send you on a special mission. President and Ready, Your Excellency, I want you to go and take credentials for Julia Ujiambo to Dr. Kuti Faludihan. So he signed the credentials and he gave them to me. So I had to buy a polonic and I put them inside and then I had a ballot because I want to be, you know, to fill them every minute. And you got on a plane? Yes, in f first class. Yes, first class. From JKIA? Y yes, to first class. And you know, when I arrived in London in the morning, mm. I was met by none other than the High Commissioner, Shanta Kakimalel, and his team. But it is not me who was being met. It is a document which had a green signature. Yes. More From easy. there was put on British Airways, first class, my friend. All the way to New York. All the way to New York. In New York, at the airport, I was met by three people. One, Kenya's permanent rep to the UN, Charles Gatari Maina, his deputy. Francis Cassina, President Tache, Kumbu Chokwe. Hmm. And it is not me who was being met. It is a document. <laughs> Which was still in, inside yes. your polo neck. Yes. <clears throat> I was, you know, feeling it every time. Yeah. Yeah. From there now, I went to the UN headquarters. Did they make it in time? A bigger man? Did they make it in time? With the yes. Documents? They made it? Yes. So I took the document to the Secretary General, Dr. Kuti Fandheim. Yes. I do not want to tell you this because you'll be surprised. You think I'm a very important person. Do you know the hotel where I was put? Go on. 
Wendorf Astoria. Oh, I know it. Waldorf Astoria. You know Astoria. it is half a million per day? Kenya shillings? What? Yes. That's where you were staying? Yes. You know why? Because of the document. <laughs> Not because of you. No. Because of the documents. Because of the document. How? Waldorf Astoria. Yeah, Waldorf Astoria. Yes. On, uh, you know it. Of course I know it. Right off of uh, Is it Park, a small hotel? Park Avenue of, in the 50s. I think 52nd Street. Yes. Beautiful hotel. Yes. Wow. Wow. Now. <clears throat> yes. That was one of my best moments. Being picked by the president and being sent to New York. And you see I was feeling big, you know. Yeah. The permanent representative to the UN, yes. Charles Maina, Francis Casina, and Kumbu Chokwe. Do you know how old I was? Mm, how old were you? 1981, 32 years. Wow. Energetic young man. Yes. Yeah. A big crop of hair. <laughs> yeah. There's another great story that you tell about uh, Moi and his rungu. Yes. Go on. Well. That was um, something else. From New York, now when I present the credentials to Kuti Valutheim, I telephoned Mr. Moi. I told him I have done my job. What do I do? He told me, stay there. I'll find you in the... In the <coughs> so Mr. came later, after about uh, four days. To the Wal stay at the Waldorf? Yes, I stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. Mm. He came and addressed the meeting but for the United Nations General Assembly. From there, we flew to Washington. And Muse was given uh, lunch by the marijuana smoking uh, mayor, Marion Shapiro Bumbari. Yes, Bari. yes, Marion Barry. You know, Marion Shapiro Bumbari. Yes. Okay? Yeah. From there, we stayed in Washington for some time, then flew to Los Angeles. We were staying at the Bonifentia Hotel mm. in Los Angeles. Then he was given lunch by the mayor, who was also black. OK? Mm -hmm. Now, when we were descending the stairs, Mr. Moy was holding the balustrades. Then his ivory button fell. Fimbo ya nyayo. Fimbo ya nyayo. Fell. It fell. And cracked. And it broke into two. We could not go further than we had to go and spend a night out in um, Honolulu. I was told, I was asked, how can we get another room here? Can they fashion one? No, they couldn't. Why not stick it together with cellar tape or something? No, no, no. Oh, glue. It was badly broken. So we telephoned Nairobi, State House. We told the secretary to go to Musa's office, see w whether there was a, a room. Luckily, there were two ivory buttons. So we told Peter Rotich, who was also a personal assistant, <coughs> to Moi, pick the two rungus, fly to Harare. Harare had been renamed Harare because previously it was Salisbury. Salisbury, that's right. Yes, it was Taiwan. And you know, Zimbabwe, who was the southern Rhodesia, had gotten independence in 1980. That's right. So they changed the name to Harare. So from there, he took counters, Australian Airlines. We were motor monitoring from Honolulu. So he flew across Southeast Asia. So we met in Sydney. In Sydney? In Sydney, Australia. You, f you guys flew from Honolulu? From Honolulu to Sydney. Sydney. And you know, we flew on Monday. And we, we lost a Tuesday because we crossed the international data line. Mm. So I lost a, tush, a, a Tuesday in my life. Yeah. OK? Yeah. Though we met in Sydney, Peter boarded the plane, gave the old man his ivory button, 
and he descended, weaving it. Like to nothing. Kenyans who were waiting for him. Yes. Then from there, <coughs> we flew to we flew to Melbourne. In Melbourne, we were staying at a hotel, uh, Victoria Hotel. That is where we were watching the assassination of Anwar El Sadat mm, in Egypt. In Egypt. Wow. Okay. By his soldiers during a parade yes. to celebrate a national day. Yeah. What okay. Was, what was that? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. Nineteen eighty-one. <coughs> from there, from there now, Muse went for retreat in Canberra, then back to Melbourne. Then we came to Kara to Karachi. And then to uh, London, then to Nairobi. Now, because we were fearful, because now they started fearing, uh, because now people were being assassinated everywhere. So we did not land in Nairobi from Gong side. We landed from the opposite direction. Wow. And you, obviously, he was the president. He was allowed. Nobody does that, huh? Yes, nobody does that. You were the president. <sighs> That is the rungu. So, there are some things I value. I always value Julia Ojiambo. I look for her and I buy a goat for her because her forgetfulness made me stay in one of Astoria for a long time. <laughs> and it was enjoyable. Yeah, and now her daughter works for the UN in uh, New York City. Yes. Right? Yes. Sandra Ajambu. Yes. Imagine. Mm -hmm. Life is like that. Um, there was another story. Uh, oh, so the coup in 82. Yes. Was that a tough time? It was a tough time. A tough time. He changed after that, didn't he? You see, the president is a human being. When you know that people want to kill you, you have to be on the defensive. And what made Moy annoyed is that after the coup was crushed by General Mohammed and other soldiers, Mulinge brought two letters to the State House. One was written to Mulinge by a politician. Another one by a lawyer politician. They had written to Mulinge, asking him, please do not forget us in your new government. But you see, when the coup attempt was quashed, there was no way of retrieving the letters from the post office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the lawyer decided to die instead of facing the shame. So he died immediately. As in killed himself or? No, he just fell sick and a um, like kind of a heart attack and died. The Kisi one went into depression. For a long time, he waited until uh, Simon Yachai formed his own party, people. And then I sent him to get a position. I do not want to tell you the position he got because that one will be to unmask him. He's still that, alive? He's still alive. And he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, in your opinion, which American president was uh, President Moy closest to in that time? Do, do you think was it uh, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter? Jimmy Carter. Yes, you, you know, um, Jimmy Carter was born in 1924. Uh, Robert Mugabe in 1924. Um, Kaunda 1924. So they used to call themselves 1924 boys. <laughs> <laughs> because President Moy was also born in 1924. Yes, o officially. Officially. Yeah. But you give him 10 years because... Yes, uh, Gino told us to give him 10 years. Yes, more. So he could have been older than uh, Sir Charles, than Jonjo. Yes, because Sir, Sir Charles, Sir Charles, Jonjo, 
who was born in 1920. Peter Mugai Kenyatta born in 1920. Jeremiah Nyaka 1920. Now, that one was indefinite because, you know, Jojo's father was a chief. Mm -hmm. Just Jeremiah Nyaga's uh, uh, father was a pastor in Embu. Okay? Um, of course, uh, Jomo Kenyatta was literate, so he knows when Peter was, was born. Yeah, those are known, but Moi did not know. Yes, so Mo Moi did not know when he was born. Yeah. Yes. Uh, who would you encourage to read your book, Lee? Who would you like to read your book? Who, they're watching you right now. Is it young people? Is it young Kenyans who do not understand, have no clue about what life was like in the 60s, 70s, 80s? Everybody. First of all, I would like presidents to read my book. Because the handlers are driven more by pursuit of power. They use the presidents as mirror cards. They intimidate people outside. They think they are a piece of the presidency. They are supposed to be messengers. They are supposed to be servants. But when they are out there, they want to trample upon people. You see, like when I write about Jomo Kenyatta, how he was neglected by people. Everywhere. People didn't care. Even the places like Nakuru. Once he went to, to sleep, there was nobody there, all big people. They just went to make a merry. They must be very careful. And they want to tell the people of Kenya that when you see state houses, state lounges, white houses, palaces, they are very colorful. They glitter. But there's a lot of rot inside, a lot of infighting, a lot of backstabbing for nothing. But because where there is power and money, mm. people just, even, if, even when there is enough for everybody, people just want to fight. And the tribalism. And not one race fighting another. Even ethnicities. Ethnicities. And it's still the same today, huh? The same today. Uh, lots of messages coming in, Lee. So many messages. Um, <clears throat> uh, what are you doing now? Uh, where do you live? Uh, what do you do for a living? Farming, pension? Where's your family? When people serve so diligently for so long, what happens when they retire? So what are you doing now? I've got a small farm. Um, I grow vegetables. That is what I live in. I live on. Um, when you retire, don't overwork yourself. Don't overload yourself with too many things. You know, when the people retire, many people, they go and get married. When you get married at the age of 60, then you have small children. Then you, you, you die very quickly. Yeah, myself, I just live uh, like a bachelor. So I haven't got enough. I, I can assure you I will not starve. What, what do I need? I just need two houses. One to live in and one to live on. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. To uh, want to live in? W want to live on. <clears throat> my mentor, my boss, act like a fool to survive. Thank you, sir. That's Carol Kihara. And then uh, Francis Gashuri says, bravo to Lee. Looking forward to read his memoir. A question for him. What lessons can current and future presidents, pressmen, do and not do? First of all, I want to advise not only presidents, pressmen, I want to advise all pressmen. The job of a pressman is very glamorous. They appear on TV, they have bylines on newspapers. That one might make them think that uh, they are very important and forget themselves. 
politicians will call you by your first name. They will smile at you because they want good copy from you. But when you are no longer working, you realize that you are alone. As long as you live, you got only two friends, genuine friends. Those ones will never forsake you. One is God. The second one, the second one is your money. God and money, those are your best friends. And if you don't have w one of them? You are finished. You are not only finished, you are finished completely. <laughs> <laughs> Francis also wants to know, what's the biggest mi misconception that people had about Daniel Arab Moy? The biggest misconception. Um... The biggest misconception was that he was a tribalist. Because I do not know why. When the people looked at State House and they see any black person there, they <coughs> say, you are a college. Especially presidential press. Mm. I I was the director throughout. I'm a Moembu. My deputy, one of my deputies, Salina Kasu, was a Swahili from the coast. One of my chief information officers was a lawyer, Francis Molina. My camera, my cameraman, I had uh, Johnny Moyeshi, a lawyer. I had uh, Musa Alushula Sakwa, a lawyer. I got the producers, Agna Sande Mahakara, a lawyer. John Omenda, a lawyer. Memeru are there, photographers, Nicholas Dithenge Kamba. But you see, people had a tendency of thinking that all oh, those are colleges just because they are black. Those were misconcep misconceptions. Yeah. The secretary throughout was a Jude Maloba, hallelujah. But people thought she was a college. That was a misconception. He was not a tribalist. But you see, the president may not have known about the messages. Now, the people who are who employ messages, they had a tendency of employing people from their own villages. But it was not Moy's policy. No. Muse wanted regional balance. He wanted people from everywhere. Mm. Yes. My secretaries, one was Kikuyu, the other one was Taita, and Aluya had three secretaries. And Muse was very happy. That is what he wanted. But you see, when you are too busy with the matters of state, some, there's a lot of monkey business going down below there. Like now President Uhuru Kenyatta does not know the grass cutters, the people who are tending the flower beds. You may not know. If they are all the people may think, oh, you are tribal. He is not. Some people, they are let down by the people who are supposed to do better. No. Yes. Your former job is now actually held by a press woman. Yes. Kanze Dana. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, how do you think, how different do you think her job is from the one you had? Um, you see, uh, initially, mine was a very difficult job. Because now everything is digital. Real time. During my early days as director of presidential press, if we are covering a function in Mandera, you have to bring material physically. I had to hire planes every now and then. In, in places like uh, Moyale, Busia, Narok, you have to bring photo, you know, films. Yeah, our job is uh, easier now. Mine was very difficult yeah. to, to, to start with, yeah. Yeah. I must add Kanza Dana Mararo, just in case uh, Nick calls me and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well done. There are many people who work for President Uhuru Kenyatta who have a few weeks left in office. They will be absorbed into the civil service or do they leave with President Uhuru? Now, there is what we call the Presidential Retirement Benefits Act, which was signed into law in 2003, 30th December, in Mombasa, by President Kebaki. you are allowed 
one press officer and one photographer. That is for President Uhuru Kenyatta. About two chiefs, gardeners, an ADC, he is not allowed to absorb many. You go with very few, very few, mm. yes. You cannot take three reporters. You cannot take, um, um, a, you not have a, a, a cameraman, no, a television cameraman. Mm. You do not have a producer. You do not have a technical officer. No, it's limited, very, very limited. Others will be absorbed into the civil service. No. Yes. Wow. There's a lot of feedback on the magic wall, Lee. I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy. People are loving your book and they haven't even read it yet. <laughs> it's incredible. Let's go to the magic wall. Tweets coming in very thick and very, very fast. <clears throat> uh, Elphas uh, Naivasha Njero says, ask him his opinion, one, relationship between Uhuru and Ruto. Yes. Two, what he thinks about is it Ruto? Yeah, what he thinks about Ruto. And three, what he thinks about Raila. And four, what he thinks will make a good president for Kenya. So, one, relationship between Uhuru and Ruto. Yes, I'll answer that. Go on. Uh, before Moi died, Muse Moi died, he told me, when you go, to hunt jackals, wolves, and foxes with your dog. There is one thing you should remember, that your dog and the jackal you are hunting and the, and the wolf you are hunting, all those are cousins. They can turn against you. There is no difference between Deputy President William Ruto, there is no difference between him and Raila Ondinga, and Uhuru Kenyatta, and Kalonzo Musioka, and Mosaria Mondavadi, and Munde Awori. First of all, all those people are political cousins. They can turn against you. That is one clan. I am going to give you a little history. The late Daniel Arab Moy, was, when he was the leader of the opposition, the leader of Kandu, he used to, to attack Muse Jomo Kenyatta very bitterly. In 1964, Jomo Kenyatta called Daniel Arab Moy, and he told me, I know you are attacking me, but we are both politicians. The people of Kenya, the hoi poloi, that is our food. Our food might run away. So you come, let us greet each other, because the Kikuyu, they come from the east, the Kalejin come from the west. Let us meet in Akuru, greet each other, and get land for our people in the Rift Valley. And <coughs> hoi rose to become vice president, and later, president of Kenya. They buried the hatchet. Moi had taken Odinga's job. Odinga Odinga's job. Mm. In 1978, when he ascended to power, he made Jaramogi Odinga Odinga, the chairman of the cotton and cotton seed and lint marketing board. Because they are the same, they are politicians. Later, Mr. Moi greeted Raila, and he made him, although Moi had jailed Raila, he later made him Secretary General of Kanu and a Minister for Energy. Uhuru has greeted Raila Amoro Odinga. They now call each other brothers. Kalonzo said, I would rather, I would be the most stupid person if I joined Raila. He changed his mind and he did join him. Kebunya said, I would rather die than resign. He resigned. So if you look at these people, they are political cousins. 
they are political cousins. I, they are the same. Ruto is now 55 years. People of Kenya must learn to love his, or to learn, they must learn to like his face because they're gonna see it for a long time, for the next 40 years. He's not going anywhere. Why? Because when he leaves office, he will get two cars, 2,000 cc, 3,000 cc, filled by the government, maintained by the government. And his salary will be 80% the salary of a sitting deputy president. Medical cover, he will get. Diplomatic passport, access to all airports, VIP lounges. Raila is enjoying the same. Mundavadi is enjoying the same. Mundi Awadi. So these people are not going anywhere. Just reorganizing themselves. It is the people of Kenya who should think about themselves, not those people. They are already taken care of by the taxpayer. Mm. They will be on our backs for as long as they live. That is not enough. If they die, their wives, they will earn half of what they are getting. People should go to the government printer and get this small book called the Presidential Retirement Benefits Act. Don't worry about those people. They are already taken care of until they die. It is the people of Kenya who should think about themselves. So when they go to vote, it's not a, a matter of life and death. Vote peacefully. These people are not going, they are not going to starve. Don't think about them. Think about yourself. Go and vote. Forget about them. Good advice there, Lee. Good advice. By the way, um, here's a message from Kalua Green who says, Lee is a great man and worked very closely with my dad who was a florist in State House Gardens. Yes, Reverend Kalua. I know him. Uh -huh. Yes. And I know the young man. He went to primary school at State House. Yes. He used to be uh, very nice in singing. Is that right? Oh, yes. <laughs> and the poetry. And poetry. <laughs> okay. Yes, I know the young man. <laughs> so many messages, thick and fast. Okay, uh, the, Kel the Kelvin Kim says, Jeff, I used to serve Mr. Njiro in a restaurant in Kelalesho in 2016. I can tell you he's a walking library. I agree. Make that a walking, talking encyclopedia. Wow. So many messages, so many tweets. Uh, Kennedy Ruta says, kindly ask Mr. Lin Jiro, who was the pres who was the late President Moy's favorite driver? Allah? Maybe it was Ruto. Or... Do you know? Do you know? Yes, yeah, most, yeah. most favorite driver. Now, President Moy's most uh, favorite uh, driver was called James Ndivo. He was uh, he was from Ukambani. All right. Robert Kiberenga is saying, Lee Njiro's book is a masterpiece of an insight into statecraft. Political science students and pundits should find this very interesting, very intriguing. God bless you, Lee. Thank you. More tweets, thick and fast. Uh, Mike Maina says, congratulations, my friend Lee. I learned a lot from you whenever I visited you at... What's that? Get in a resort. Uh -huh. General resort, Nakuru. Let's know where to grab. <laughs> Let me know where to grab a copy in Mombasa. That's your friend Mike Miner. Yes, I know him. Okay. LL Cool Roger. Okay, that's what you want to call yourself. Ask Lee Jiro if he thinks Mze Moi would approve of the book were he still alive, given the nature of deep secrets spilled therein. There is no way he could approve of my book which talks about his death. It is his death which makes the book more interesting mm. because it's covered there. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it, so he wouldn't have approved, obviously. Yeah, because he could not be dead. Yeah. Because death, his death is a chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> your closing thoughts moving forward. You said something very important about these elections and how important they are for the people and not the people running. Yes. Yes, I, I, I said the people running, uh, especially I said Raila Odinga 
and Ruto, those are the same people. They know each other. They were in ODM, they were in Pentagon together, they were in Summit together. The Ruto is a, is a college, the other one is a, is a Luo, and they are neighbors. I know they are Hamites. Luo is about four million. Courage is about four million. These people don't greet each other. So, so let us vote wisely. Just vote for the person you want. No violence. Because both of them are already taken care of by the taxpayer. Ruto will earn a salary until he dies. For a long time. Ruto is 55. And he's going to live probably for another 40, 40 years at night because people die at 95 around there. He has got about 40 years to go. Raila has got about 20 years. These are the people you are going to see for a long time. They, 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 they don't pay for petrol. <laughs> they don't pay for watchmen. They don't pay for medical care. They are taken care of by the government. The people who are in trouble are we, the citizens of the country, the hoi polloi, the masses, yeah. the ordinary people. Yeah. So people might think, Mutetu ataenda wapi? Where will our money go? Going where? They will stay in the current forever. <laughs> It is we go, go to stay in Kibera in Ashanti. Yeah. It is going to, going to contend with the price of, uh, <laughs> of flour. Yeah. Yes, and sugar. Those people are okay. Don't die for them. Just vote and go home. That's right. Vote and go home. Can't wait to read the president's press man, Lin Jiru, putting history in perspective because he had a front row seat to history unfolding. What a story, what a memory. Uh, walking, talking, encyclopedia, no doubt. Looking forward to the book league. Well done, congratulations. Fighting in the Rift Valley. Yes, you want to talk about fighting in the Rift Valley? Uh, let them read the book, uh, oh, buy the book, all right. Yes. Thanks so much for being a part of JKL. Every Wednesday it's all about those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other, JKL. Thanks so much for being a part of this show, folks. Hope you learned as much as we did from this historian of repute. And I hope you pick up this book, The President's Pressman, Lead You a Memoir. Check it out. Coming to a bookshop near you. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Good night, good night. God bless you all.